Hello, my child. Welcome home. For your body, a roof and provisions. For your mind, an astral gateway. For your spirit, a south. And for the thread that pulls you inexorably into the murky future, a single purpose, an infinite mission. You have chosen to embark on a path of self-initiated reprogramming. And for this, we thank you. The world is different, worse than it was. And the way to a better one begins here and now, with you. Excavate. Eliminate. Propagate. Remember these words as we begin. In the world above, you have seen the ravenous stockpiling of wealth subsume every other value system that once existed. Those that rule are nothing but the most ruthless golden ghosts the world has yet seen. Excavate. Eliminate. You will teach yourself to love and hate certain things. Above all else, the concept of gaining wealth will become at first repulsive, and then inconceivable to you. A thought so slippery and strange that your mind refuses to grasp it. This is our gospel, the good news we bring the world above. You begin as an excavator, examining behaviors, Locating patterns, testing hypotheses, providing the raw material for our collective mind to distill. As you swim deeper, you enter the sect of eliminators. You'll foray above, locating and destroying stockpiles of wealth and decadence, killing the rich and their cronies when necessary. You will disrupt the flow of information between nodes. You will attack the centers where information is stored. When the practice of excavation and elimination has fully refined your spirit, when your soul is aligned and your mind ready to receive our deepest secrets, you begin initiation into our most sacred sect, the propagators. Trouble not, my child. All will be revealed. You belong here. Whether you are born from a tube, a breeding program, or the last rebel method, have arrived here, deep in the earth, and we love you, we need you, we are gods who have divinely appointed ourselves, and now, the divinity emerges, we will deep program the center of everything, when you see a core, you will apply your scalpel in swift surgery, where there is an invisible standard, you will shine a light so brilliant it dissolves and convinced, this is your infinite mission, excavate, eliminate, Propagate. Most stories are simply a dazzling smokescreen. Flare invented to make you forget that you will eventually die. But this one, the story you are now embroiled in, this story, this is real. Now, my child, come in. Go for it. Begin the work.
invisible world inside. A system of movement balanced by waves, inhabited by awareness, creating more. Forever. Be careful.
observe the world around you, for there are natural omens which have special meaning. The gazing ball has revealed an image. I see a butterfly. This suggests a carefree period will soon begin. Shaving Mr. McMahon bald. One billionaire shaving another billionaire's head. That doesn't hurt, not at all. I am an android. At the beginning of the 21st century, the nuclear holocaust had come to pass, and civilization vanished. Spread the word is Bible this bucket. great big huge wow. bucket. Inside of here is two dozen Bibles, 24 Bibles in this bucket. I think it'd be a fantastic idea, really, to honestly bury a bucket of the Bibles. The base is under attack by foreign enemy agents working for Iran. The base is under attack by foreign enemy agents working for Iran. They're remaking Indiana Jones without Harrison Ford. You can't do that. And now they're making Ghostbusters with only women. What's going on? <laughs> Security camera. 
camera inoperable. That is Earth. <laughs> that is Earth. Right. It's hot. Don't pollute. Look at all the pollution. Look at this. How do you do it? What's your secret? I would eat right out of this shovel. Which only goes to show that even the fearsome Frankenstein has a 100% red-blooded American sense of humor. <laughs>
Comet Hale Bob is hurtling through the inner solar system, a flying mountain of ice 40 miles across. As it approaches the sun, it should get brighter and brighter.
after a while, the battle will be over. For that day when we shall lay down our burden and study war, no more. Finally, brethren, after a while, the battle will be over. For that day when we shall lay down our burden and study war, no more. Finally, brethren, after a while, the battle will be over. For that day when we shall lay down our burden and study war, no more. Finally, brethren, after a while, The battle will be over. For that day when we shall lay down our burden and study war, no more. Finally, brethren, after a while, the battle will be over. For that day when we shall lay down our burden and study war. The battle will be over. The battle will be over. There will be no more. The battle will be over. There will be no more. The battle will be over. There will be no more. The battle will be over.
I know how to fix it. It's okay now. I know it ends just like that big pile of trash that I knew once before I threw it away. It was different than those other times with other faces reflecting back to me. The mirror and the river, the faces of my family. It was a wish where I went on to become happier. I didn't get lost in desires, detach, disconnect. Those strands linger and smell feverish. A stream of souls coursing through my name's eye. A laugh happened in my room at 4 a.m. last night. I sure it was my own from the dream I was just startled away. Never give up on the source of all lies within you. Alongside every waking thought and a shadow, I never gave up on you. And your daisy true blue shining eye grasp on life, spreading seeds of sunlight. I didn't do it again. I never did it. I did it didn't. It's getting hard to remember who I used to be. I feel incredibly dumb. No new thoughts. I've wasted myself. Cavities. I'm that nagging feeling of the trash that needs to be thrown out. Where do I start? Where do I step out? It's true what the Hindus believe. We are recycled over and over. I used to have a Bart Simpson wallet. I had him burning cash with a coke bubble saying, Big Spender. My sister would steal money from me. And money never lasts. It fades again and again. Recycled is trash. Monuments frozen in time. Collapsing in nature. Decay is growth, a giant heap where information comes to rest. I just want big bread and cigarettes. Doctors say I'm healthy until I'm not. Sick before school, speaking a dead language, watching Rain's World 2. Then there was nothing left but slush ice and dyed brains. There's no present, contemporary as always. Shapes and forms never change in the illusion of now. Never always littered with rubies and blood currency. Marks, letters, transition, recycle is trash. We're not young, we're eternal never. The donuts were on top of ashes, piled in with monster magazines, face paint on skulls, rights of the dead. All my electronics are outdated, their wires tangled, leading nowhere, snakes weaving inside and out our heads. The museum collects our trash. All my savings are worthless, entombed with my possessions. I bring money to the afterlife, pay my way in at the gates. Will heaven take my credit or be able to read the mark? Valuable to who? Waste worth? The faces of ancestors? The tools antiquated in time used in the present? Taking shape in the modern? A trail? A map for us to follow backwards? Never forget that instant memorialization is losing context. We are losing meaning and referencing symbols. These are the limits of society. A violent expression. What were all my names before and after this life? How the voice changed? I would stay the same. Cotton candy bummy days. Near the fair we hear the youth, adjacent to the cemetery, singing songs to enchant the ghost. Memory remember me. Let me not dim, dissolve into this brighter light that casts a shadow. The mirror reflects cobweb hair, raw hands, rock teeth, stiff cracked spine, weathered lips, sagging heart, empty brain, stuffed with flowers and myrrh. The mummy's tomb. Time is a crypt to be flown, 
afterlife and earth inside, time capsule, currency, precious writing. These do not signify their time, but of time itself, which is analogous to experience. It reminds you to remember you've been here before. Here doesn't care about the modern times, the serpent and the sun, basking in the bake of the beach. I stride toward the peeling waves to feel those body centers. My heart pounds. It's not a hard line between wake and sleep, between past and future. It's a process. On the lawn, the American squirrels tell us all is well, and that America is kind to animals, to itself, and to the rest of the world, and that in everyone's heart there is a slumbering squirrel. I believe that behind these smiling eyes there lurks a cold, ferocious beast fearfully stalking us. On the same lawn with the squirrels stands a sign put there by some society or other of Jesus. Vietnam, Cambodia, Lebanon, Grenada, we are a violent society in a violent world. Everywhere survival has become a burning issue, perhaps by some obscure weariness of life or a collective desire for catastrophe. Not only is the fact of living not really well attested, but the paradox of this society is that you cannot even die in it anymore since you are already dead. This is real suspense. Smile and others will smile back. Smile to show how transparent, how candid you are. Smile if you have nothing to say. Most of all, do not hide the fact you have nothing to say nor your total indifference to others. Let this emptiness, this profound indifference shine out spontaneously in your smile. Give your emptiness and indifference to others. Light up your face with the zero degree of joy and pleasure. Smile, smile, smile. All dwellings have something of the grave about them. But here the fake serenity is complete. The unspeakable houseplants, lacking everywhere like the obsessive fear of death. The picture windows looking like Snow White's glass coffin. The clumps of pale, dwarf flowers stretched out in patches like sclerosis. The proliferation of technical gadgetry inside the house, beneath it, around it, like drips in an intensive care ward. Everything here testifies to death having found its ideal home. Joggers are the true Latter-day Saints and the protagonists of an easy-does-it apocalypse. Nothing evokes the end of the world more than a man running straight ahead on a beach. Swathed in the sounds of his walkman, cocooned in the solitary sacrifice of his energy. Indifferent even to catastrophes since he expects destruction to come only as the fruit of his own efforts. From exhausting the energy of a body that has in his own eyes become useless. Sex, beach, and mountains. Sex and beach, beach and mountains. Mountains and sex. A few concepts, sex and concepts, just a life.
everything is destined to reappear as simulation. Landscapes as photography, women as the sexual scenario, thoughts as writing, terrorism as fashion and the media, events as television. Things seem only to exist by virtue of this strange destiny. You wonder whether the world itself isn't just here to serve as advertising copy in some other world. This omnipresent cult of the body is extraordinary. It is the only object on which everyone is made to concentrate, not as a source of pleasure, but as an object of frantic concern, in the obsessive fear of failure or substandard performance, a sign and an anticipation of death, that death to which no one can any longer give a meaning. The orgy is over, liberation is over. People no longer oscillate between desire and its fulfillment, but between their genetic formula and their sexual identity, to be discovered. This is a new erotic culture, this is a culture based on the questioning of one's own definition. Am I sexed? What sex am I? Ultimately, is sex necessary? What does sexual difference consist in? Liberation has left everyone in an undefined state. It is always the same. Once you are liberated, you are forced to ask who you are. Everywhere the transparency of interfaces ends in internal refraction. Everything pretentiously termed communication and interaction. Walkman, duck glasses, automatic household appliances, high-tech cars. Even the perpetual dialogue with the computer ends up with each monad retreating into the shade of its own formula into its self-regulating little corner and its artificial immunity. Everything connects, without any two pairs of eyes ever meeting. Driving on and on towards the last of the sun's rays, then by the headlights reflecting in the sand of the riverbed. Will I get through or won't I? <laughs> 